So hi everyone. So this is Imanchi here. I'm basically from SIC. So first of all, I'll just brief you a little bit about what SIC is all about. So it is actually about the, I mean, it is like the overseas education company. We deal with almost all countries across the globe and we have our representations in those particular countries like Australia, New Zealand, US, Europe, UK, including Asian countries like Singapore, Dubai, Japan. We also have our presence uh, across India. Almost we have our offices more than 20 and we have our international offices as well, which is like Australia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, right? So it's just a brief that I wanted to give you and regarding uh, today's session about the impact of COVID-19 because we understand there's a lot of confusion, uh, you know, in the minds like if anyone is planning for studies after class 12 for overseas or even after bachelor's or master's, masters, what are their plans, how the things will be about the safety and everything. We do have Miss Sanya. I'll just quickly uh, let you know about her because since the lockdown started from, I think, 23rd, 24th March this year in India, she is one of the person who is actively participating in all our social medias on this COVID-19 thing. So I'll just ask Sanya, you can share your experience, how the things are, and then we'll take it further. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. So before I start, I would just uh, request all of you to send your questions in the question uh, section, which you'll be able to see on your screens. Uh, you won't be able to speak in the session, but uh, surely you can write your questions in the either in the chat section or in the question section. And we are answering questions one by one uh, once the, uh, the common information uh, round is done. So coming back to uh, the information which I would like to give you is that since the lockdown started till now, we have seen different phases. Um, I'm sure because today's session is all about COVID-19. So uh, when it started, the students were really skeptical whether they should plan now or they should drop their plans because uh, it's definitely related to their health. Even the parents were not really sure. But then um, one thing which is the proof that things never stopped is the universities were always operating, be it from home, be it from their campuses, but they were open and they were open for the applications as well. The, the first thing which came as a solution to COVID-19 was online studies, which you which some of you must be aware of, because um, if you are unable to travel to the respective country initially, then what you can do is you can start your studies online in India itself. And as soon as the international travel resumes for your country of destination, you can immediately um, fly if you have the visa. So that is the information with which we actually uh, sailed through uh, during the initial phase of COVID-19. And now talking of the current situation, things are far better than as they were in the initial time. Um, some of the countries have already started uh, accepting new visa applications and uh, they are actually giving out decisions as well in one such country is Australia for which Ms. Imanchi will be able to give you more information. All this while uh, we were getting uh, visas for, uh, for, the to, for the short term from Canada, like the tourist visa. So things never stopped, they were all going. And even in the current situation, uh, if you talk of countries like UK, uh, if you talk of countries like um, US or other European countries, then the air bubbles have already been there and the international travel has resumed to a very limited extent, but yes, it has resumed. So um, there have been air bubbles already for US and France. So any person who wants to go to European countries or even UK for that matter, can actually travel through France and it will make their international travel possible. But of course, all you need is a visa before you uh, take that step of uh, leaving India. So for that, the quick update for you is that, um, so if, if I talk of European countries in specific, then, um, UK has already uh, started accepting applications to the VFS, but again, it is limited at the moment. Um, and 
everything is based on the basis of prior appointment so be it uh, so any place where you have to go or you know physically you need a prior appointment so that the norms of social distancing and mm -hmm. the other precautionary measures can be uh, taken care of so um, we have been doing a lot of Instagram sessions for almost all the countries that we represent, as mentioned by Ms. Imanshi already. Um, so you can visit that is siec.india on Instagram, and you will be able to see the recordings of those sessions or from the recent times as well to get the recent most updates of international education. And also, I would like to inform you that while you're preparing for overseas education, the most there are a few things which are common for any that you may plan. So um, the first thing is that, of course, uh, you need to plan a budget. And for that, many of the students cho choose to go for the education loan. And definitely, HGFC credit is something which you can really look up to because they are very much um, available they have been available all this while and they have the uh, you know they have the um, authorization and the uh, provisions to grant an education loan for overseas education purposes that's one another thing is that um, you must have heard of exams like IELTS, TOEFL, GRE, GMAT. So these are some additional exams that you have to give when you're planning for overseas education. Um, if you're talking of um, the English proficiency, um, so, so the exams which you generally have to take are IELTS or PTE, you must but Duolingo is something which is definitely dependent on the respective university if that's going to accept it and going forward the high commission or the embassy of that in, uh, of that country because is have to present your documents so when you are planning to give a language proficiency exam make sure that's going to help you with the visa application as well um, and uh, test providers like TOEFL or PT, they have already been um, conducting the exams online. So yes, uh, that's a great possibility for you to um, take your uh, process ahead uh, for the education abroad. In addition to the English proficiency test, the next type of exams which you need to give are GRE, GMAT, or SAT. So if that, that means if you have just done your 12 and you want to go for bachelor's abroad, then, uh, or, then you might require an exam which is known as SAT, especially when you're going to countries like US or uh, in Europe, it's, it's commonly required in Finland. And some of the top notch universities in Australia may require that as well, and other countries, they, they also operate similarly. Um, so, GRE is being conducted online uh, since a very early. Um, phase of uh, the lockdown so if you're planning to go to university where that's a requirement then don't just wait for offline coaching or offline uh, exams to be conducted because some, this is happening online um, now if you've not given the exam yet then uh, we do have uh, ACCT at SI which uh, is the test prep center for us so uh, here we are able to provide the coaching for the desired exams that you may require uh, when you're planning to study abroad. So um, for that also, you can contact us um, after the session. Um, we will be um, just uh, typing in the contact details in the chat section. You can take it from there later on. So this is a quick bit about the um, things that, that are happening and which you need to take care of. Um, and how they're progressing. So the bottom line is that nothing has stopped. Applications are open uh, even for September 2020 intake, for October 2020 intake, and even for Jan intake. And in Australia, I suppose for November intake as well. Um, so don't stop your process. Just if you haven't applied yet, then get in touch with one of the experts immediately and get your application done, arrange your documents, and so that you are able to get the visa in time. So I'll pass it yeah. on to um, Manshi now so that she can give you information about Australia, New Zealand and other countries yeah. uh, from Asia. And just one more yeah. thing, uh, in the meantime, so that we save time, you can please um, send us the questions in the comment section on this question section so that we are able to answer all the questions that we get. Right, so passing on to you, uh, Manshi. Yeah. 
Thanks, Anya. Just quickly, Roshan, I can see a question. Yes, UK qualifications are recognized worldwide. And uh, about, uh, you know, Jan 21 and September 20 intake for October 20 intake for Europe. Sanya will again be briefing you more about it. Uh, yeah, so I'll just cover Australia and then one by one, we both will be taking your questions as well. So if I say about Australia and New Zealand, the it's nothing is closed as of now. All the universities are working. It is just that every student is working, studying online. Now, when I say about online studies, you might think what will be an impact on the post-study working rights because no one knows how the situation, how long will it be carried, right? So, like, for example, when you plan for overseas, usually in a semester, you will be studying four subjects, okay, in a semester. So now what has the university started on is, even if you start studying online with one or two units, you will be studying online for this semester and there will not be any effect on your post-study working rights. Now, in that case, what I'm trying to explain you is for for Australia, if you complete your degree with minimum of two years, so minimum two year degree will actually give you two years to four years of post-study working rights, depending on which location are you traveling for Australia. Similarly, for New Zealand, after completion of your education qualification for one year or, or two years, whether it is diploma or a degree, you will be getting one year to three years of uh, post-study working rights. So if any student is actually studying online, it will not have any effect on, on this post-study working right. The second thing that I wanted to update you here is, even if any student is studying online as of now, depending on the academic qualification and the university you are applying on, you are still eligible to get the scholarship for the same. So many universities are actually giving scholarships starting from 10% to 30% to as high as you know 50 percent or so okay also when i say about high commissions because when the traveling will start and the flights will start so during this situation uh very recently the high commissions are obviously they have opened up and we have already started lodging the visa files and uh, it's you know fortunately that we have started getting the outcomes obviously the positive outcomes from high commission end so if even you are getting the, you know, studying online, getting the high, uh, waiting for the response from the high commission, it will actually be a positive thing from a student's behalf only, because you are actually valued more in that case when they are giving you the outcome on your uh, study or the visa. Okay. Uh, yes, Roshan, there are some of the interesting facts about Australian universities. There are eight universities in Australia which are actually ranking top 100 worldwide ranking. And uh, I'm glad to inform you that we work with almost all these eight universities. Australian National University being one of the very esteemed universities because all these universities are quite research oriented, okay? Uh, many of them are already doing a lot of research with whatever the current situation is like the COVID-19 thing. And currently all these top universities are also uh, making making students study online and giving the scholarships based on that particular unit. Now, some of uh, you might have this query also, what if, if your visa gets rejected later on? Now, there is an, an, another advantage of studying online is, suppose if you're studying online as of now, uh, and let's say 1% or by any chance if your uh, visa is getting rejected, you will actually receive full refund from the university. So this is another advantage. Because when you are studying online with one or two units also, it is actually advantageous for a student only because you are saving your time and finances also at the same point of time. Because you are not paying the entire semester's fees. You will be paying the fees of the subjects that you are enrolling in when you are studying online. All right. So this is another advantage of it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if anyone has uh, questions, can start typing in because I can see a lot of questions being asked and some of the, them have been answered by me and Sanya in between. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so ma'am, I was to uh, 
add a question for you. Uh, I'm not sure if yeah. Yeah, go on, go on. I'm not sure if the students are uh, aware. So as uh, as Roshan asked about some interesting facts about Australian universities, I would like you to highlight right. something about the regional area and the regional points because that's something yes. really attractive for an international yeah. student. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, so as I was mentioning about Australian National University, which is based in Canberra. Okay. Now Canberra is a regional area, so which means if a student is planning to study in a university which is based in the regional area, student will be getting three years to four years of stay back. Now, when you plan your studies in Canberra, you will be getting three years of post study working rights. Similarly, if any university which is based in Perth, like there is top universities and the other universities also. I just mentioned on the ranking of the universities because actually eight universities are based in top 100. But then there are other universities also because all, all the Australian universities are mostly ranking in between 300, 350 worldwide ranking. So there are universities which are based in Perth, wherein you will be getting three years of post study working rights. And there are some other sub regional areas wherein a student can get four years of post study working rights. If uh, to name a few, we have James Cook University, which has a campus in, you know, Gains, Townsville, wherein a, if student plans to go to study, then they will get four years of post-study working rights. Right? So that is one of the very interesting uh, parameter also for Australia because very easily student will be able to get three years, four years of post-study working rights by just studying online, by just paying one or two subject fees, not the entire semester also, and above all, getting the scholarship also for the subject that you are enrolling in. Okay? Uh, yes, Sanya, I hope I haven't missed any other question because I can see Rakesh another question yeah. for masters in computer science. What would be average cost of studying in Australia? That is tuition fee and cost of living. All right. Yeah. So the cost of living on an average for Australia is usually, you know, 10 to 15 lakhs. If I say, because if you are planning for cities like Sydney, which is the commercial hub, so obviously the cost of living will be a little higher and tuition fees varies from university, the type of or the selection of the university that you are making in. For example, if you are selecting a top ranking university, the tuition fees of that particular university will be higher as compared to the university which ranks among top 200, 250 or 300 worldwide ranking. On an average, 33,000 to 38,000 Australian dollar, which means around 15 to let's say 18 lakhs per year, is on an average tuition fees. Here, I have not included any scholarships, but when you get the scholarship and suppose when you're physically there in Australia, you are also allowed to work 20 hours part-time per week during studies. On an average, uh, you know, per hour, per hour wages that a student gets is usually 17 to 18 Australian dollar. This is the minimum that I'm mentioning you, but majorly on an average, every student does get around 22, 24, 25 Australian dollar per hour. So which actually helps you cover, you know, the living expense easily uh, when you're there in Australia physically. I hope that answers uh, your question. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there is another question for New Zealand, I suppose. I'll just repeat the question. I am planning for New Zealand. I just got the offer letters from many universities in New Zealand for undergrad. I just wanted to know the probability about international travel by FEB. However, I know everything is very uncertain. Plus, what would be the PT scores required to get an unconditional offer? Last thing, can I apply for New Zealand visa as of now? Okay. So Ish, uh, Madan, as you have already answered yourself also, yes, the situation is quite uncertain because we all knew that New Zealand actually uh, became COVID free country, one of the first countries which actually became free country. But then after, you know, passage of few days, it again started having, you know, four or five cases. But still New Zealand is the country which has the minimum number of COVID cases followed by Australia. Okay. And both the countries are very, very safe. So but on the other hand, when I say about the traveling thing, about the uncertainty in India, the cases are still rising. So we don't know what the government will be taking measures in terms of the traveling and all. 
so we will i suppose we will have to wait for at least another couple of months because in india many things have started operating uh, you know from june i guess and even from uh, august uh, let's say you know 16th august or so lot of other things and uh, there is quite ease in terms of opening of other things which were not opened in you know unlock one or two stuff like that coming back to new zealand same criteria but then for the pt score because i'm not sure which university you applied for but if it is undergrad usually you know 58 60 is usually but depending on the institute that you have applied if i compare with ilts usually overall 6 with no point uh, with no band less than 5.5 however if you score higher which is overall 6.5 with no band less than 6 in each case will actually give you a very positive response in terms of getting visa because that is also one of the thing uh, because uh, in new zealand as soon as you get the unconditional offer there are certain formalities in terms of uh, visa guidelines uh, just getting the unconditional offer then we will have to lodge your visa file and then we will have to wait response from high commission so visas have started we have started getting visas but then yes you will have to travel once the both the countries agree in terms of the traveling arrangements okay yeah i hope that answers your question ish the first question we have is for october 2020 and january 2021 at will that be at campus or uh, will that be virtual education so um definitely looking at the current scenario and the pace on which you know at which these things are getting better we definitely expect that january 1 will be uh, on campus but of course it depends on what the current situation will be then and which country you're talking about so um that's one about the october or september 2020 intake um the you know the, the mbcs are expected to start accepting the applications by end of august most likely so uh, one thing which is uh, more certain is that you might get your visa uh, the decision on your visa by um, say september or october for the respective country and then depending on the international travel you will be able to travel abroad so uh, last month the travel for us and france was um, started and students have been traveling to germany and other countries via the route uh, which has been uh, you know offered through france so um, and it's already in the in the talks that uh, the respective countries like uk and germany will be starting the international travel soon so we are expecting that october 2020 may not start on campus in october but may start on campus by end of 2020 so that's how the situation looks like then we have a question are uk qualifications recognized worldwide so i would like to answer this question more generically so definitely roshan the uk qualifications will be uh, acceptable worldwide um but even for other countries that we talk about most of these qualifications are recognized over the globe um, and to check on that you can always look at the accreditations which are there and the recognized bodies who would be um, awarding you the degrees in addition to that fields like medicine law teaching these may have their own parameters in the respective country hence we can't say if this will be worldwide recognized but definitely in uk the law that you study is recognized by the bar council of india that's an exception that's why uk is definitely one of the preferred destinations for indian students because they can connect a lot the next question is how long will my degree course take if i study in europe so this depends on the, the level of degree that you'll go for so ovi has already reported that he wants to know about masters so the masters can be of one to two years usually if you're going to a private university in a country like germany or spain you may find it for one year of course in uk and ireland it is of one year and if you're going to a country um other than that like netherlands for example or even norway say um france here all you can find a degree of 1.5 or 2 years at masters level at bachelor's level it can be 3 years 3.5 or 4 years exception is medicine so medicine uh, the degrees or another field of medicine could be up to 6 years so that's about the duration i hope that answers the question 
um moving on to the next one for europe intake okay so pushpinder i hope this answers it's again the same thing for jan we are very much positive for september we expecting a delayed star on campus until then it will be online mm, the next question Sanya, uh, you can yeah. mention about the flights you know that have uh, started in in between and the students traveling from europe to uk they don't have to be quarantined you can mention right, that. Right. Yeah, so I talked about that. So uh, that simply means that if you're going to, um, if you're going through France to UK or if you're going uh, to US, then you don't really have to uh, uh, get be a part of the quarantine thing because France has uh, basically allowed Indians Indians who are traveling uh, to enter their country and not have any uh, you know specific quarantine except the home one of course so they would be recommended to have a 14 day of home quarantine and then um, so there is no such uh, particular mandation on the students or the travelers that they have to be under quarantine when they reach their destination country and once we have the confirmation from the final destination countries like germany spain or other countries then of course you can travel directly there and you won't have to um, again do the quarantine thing as for the norms which would be uh, suggested by the respective country so um i'll move on to the next question how is covid 19 situation in uk now do you think i can still apply for september for master's course rahul uh, had asked this question but he isn't really in the session now i believe but I'll answer that for others. So yes, the September intake is still open for UK and August is the last month, the last chance for you to try for that. So um, if you're interested to go to UK, then please get in touch and start your application ASAP. The universities are offering conferences, so even if you don't have all the documents, at least start the conditional application. And in the meantime, we can arrange the other necessary documents. So, um, the next is from Pushpinder again. We'll be there at end of 2024 engineering in Spain. Most likely, yes, Pushpinder, that's what we're expecting. Because uh, Spain, uh, the Spanish embassy will be starting uh, with, the appoint uh, with the visa filings and uh, assessments by end of August. So, they have already started giving the appointments online. They have changed the visa process a little. So, um, students preparing for their visa file uh, for the visa filings they've already got the appointments and they're expecting to submit their files in the august for spain it will be a fruitful decision if you apply for the september day all right Raul, thank you so much for confirming um so that's all for europe which i have here at the moment so um Right, Sanya, I'll just answer that. But before that, I'll just answer Ish query. Yes, Ish, you would like, uh, your question is that what will be the impact on part-time jobs in NZ? So Ish, when you are there in New Zealand, uh, you know, as soon as the situation gets normal, you are allowed to work 20 hours part-time per week during studies. And you can work full-time during the vacations, which means usually 40 hours. Um, minimum per hour wage as of now is 15 New Zealand, 12 to 15 New Zealand dollar per hour, but then it can go as high as 20, 22 New Zealand dollar also per hour, depending on the location that you are going in. And it also depends which location are you in and the kind of expenses that particular city bears. Like for example, in India, Mumbai is the commercial hub, Delhi is the capital. And when we talk about other cities, you know, and you compare the expenses, a similar will be the situation and the location of the city when you plan for any country outside India. All right. Yes. Okay. So as Sanya was asking some information on Asian countries. So as I mentioned initially, we represent Singapore, Dubai, Japan, Malaysia in the Asian countries. There are another advantages if you plan because we have been discussing more of the academic requirements of any student if planning for Australia. Now suppose if any student is not meeting the requirement, either the academic requirement or say let's the visa 
uh, requirement for Australia is not getting fulfilled. There are certain universities, which are Australian-based universities, which have a campus based in Australia, uh, in Singapore, in Dubai, and in Malaysia. So you can complete your six months over there, and then you can take a campus transfer to that particular country. And your requirements will also be fulfilled because you are actually in the same university's campus, but in different countries. So the transfer to Australia from Singapore, Dubai, and Malaysia will comparatively be easier. When I say Japan, currently we are working with Tokyo International University for two undergrad courses. The advantage of Japan of this particular university is they do have their sister university in US, okay? So even if any student studies in Japan for let's say uh, two and a half years, they can do another two and a half years in US and can have, uh, you know, have both the bachelor's and the master's degree all together in just five years, okay? Now, another advantage of Japan is, which is the only country in which you can actually work 28 hours part-time during studies and obviously full-time during the vacations. And after completion of the studies, you will be getting six months of stay back, which is again extended up to one year. However, because you know the kind of economy Japan has, a lot of students actually, almost 95% students get job before the completion of their studies itself. So it's again a you know, very uh, uh, advantageous thing for you. Uh, yes, Pushpinder, you have marked a question mark that I could see. Okay, Sanya uh, Pushpinder wants to know that how can be fruitful for September 2020 Spain? So Pushpinder, do you want to know how uh, September intake will be in Spain? I suppose, is this your question? Am I right? Okay, so yes, okay. Sanya, so you can answer because Rahul has also answered, uh, has also questioned for Oxford, Nottingham print in uh, UK. Hi, so I'm just uh, looking at the questions. I've already answered the Shvinder's uh, question. Um, and um, I'll just move down to the others. Um, which university is better between all right, uh, so Rahul, Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt you between. Pushpinder has asked again. So if, I think uh, maybe he, he must have missed between. So you can repeat September. No, so his question is Spain. how can fruitful for September 2020 Spain? So that I am unable to understand what exactly you want to know. So, uh, well, you can apply for the visa. Uh, most likely you'll be able to travel because France has already opened the doors and uh, Spain and France are two Schengen countries. So once you land in France, you can then travel to Spain. So uh, if you're talking in that terms, yes, it is going to be fruitful. But if your question is anything different, then please uh, try and rephrase it once so that I can answer it appropriately. Um, moving on to the next from Rahul now. So Rahul, uh, if you ask me which is going to be better, then it won't be really fair because uh, as for my own uh, understanding and what I usually tell my students, that it depends very much on what your long-term goal is, on what exactly you are looking at. So um, you can compare to universities on the basis of fee structure that they have, on the basis of the location. But most importantly, you need to go through the course content that they are offering and which university has a better course content. So the one which is more precise in the area that you want to gain expertise in and the one which still gives you a broader understanding of your subject is something which you can look at. So um, I would leave that decision to you uh, because as for me, both the universities are great. It depends on which course and what exactly your preference is. So that's what I can add to your question here. So quality of education in both is at par. So uh, you can mark them same, but again, that's an overall uh, a comment that I'm making. Um, if you want to know for your subject, which is better, then I'll have to first know your subject.
I have to check on these universities individually. So for that, you can contact us after the webinar and we'll be able to help you then. And also I would like to inform you about, um, um, right. So I would like to inform you about few things which make the process in UK quite easy. So um, there are two possibilities for you to go to a British university. That's one is the direct entry, which means if you are meeting all the requirements, majorly the entry academic requirements and the English requirements, then you can start with the first year of your degree itself straight away. But in case you're not able to meet the academic requirement, or if you're not able to meet the English requirement, so for example, the requirement is 6.5 or above in no man less than six, but what you got was 6.5 in no man less than 5.5, or you got an overall of 5.5, then also you can still think and try of going to university or for your preferred course through the indirect entry which is known as the pathway program so for undergrad students it's the international foundation for students it's pre-masters or international graduate diploma so uh, this definitely adds another year to your studies but it actually makes sure that um, when you are studying your final uh, degree um, studies, then you actually perform well and there is no chance that your master's go down and become a PG diploma just because you were not able to score well. So the idea behind informing you about this is that don't think if university website says a higher score and you have a lower one, then you can't apply. Still get in touch with us so that we can let you know what are the alternative options which you can explore. Also, if you're talking of UK in specific, then if you have scored 65% or above in class 12, you're not really mandatorily required to sit for an IELTS or a TOEFL. It definitely depends from university to university, but as a common rule, this is what the universities follow. And okay. in, uh, uh, yes, yeah. uh, Sanya, uh, as Sanya has already mentioned about UK, I'll just quickly add on Rahul. Uh, see which university is better, as you have mentioned. I have mentioned Sanya's and my email ID because obviously the final choice will be yours. But then we will have to look at your academic uh, profile overall uh, and in general so that we can also help you guide in terms of university selection in between both of them. Uh, because then it will be easier and beneficial for you only because ultimately you'll be the one who will be studying in either of these universities. So I have shared the email ID. You can send us your academic documents or, or you know, after uh, we will also mention our contact details so that you can call us also. And uh, Pushpinder, you have asked that how long it will be on campus, uh, Spain after getting visa, which means about studies you're asking or after studies you're asking this uh, because uh, you can, you know, rephrase this question, Pushpinder, so that Sanya can answer on that. Yeah, thanks, Rahul. Yeah, we will mention our contact details, and you you are free to call because after the session, to either of us. Okay, so in between, since I left in between for the Asian countries, as I was, you know, mentioning about Singapore, Japan, Malaysia, Dubai, I would also like to add here that uh, initially when Sanya was, was also mentioning about the extra exam that is required for overseas education when you're planning for studies outside India, like uh, for ILTS, TOEFL, PT, SAT, GRE, and GMAT, uh, for all these Asian countries, you know, GRE, GMAT, SAT is not required. It is only for, you know, Singapore, if you're planning for top universities like NUS, which is NAN, National University of Singapore, NTU or SMU. And when I say ILTS, it, it, will, it can also be waived off depending on the medium of instruction that you have studied in your previous academic qualification. Okay, so that is an additional benefit that uh, what, what all exams are, are required and what not for the Asian countries for these specific. For Japan, yes, ILTS is mandatory because their official language is Japanese. And during one year of studies, initial first year of studies in Japan, it is mandatory that you'll be studying Japanese as one of the language subjects also. 
this they have incorporated because it is actually beneficial for a student only to get the part time jobs and that is why they have maintained quite a good ratio that almost 90 95% of the students actually end up with their jobs before completion of their study all right uh i would be studying msc from uk so i will be ps getting psw of 2 years that's a sure thing right okay so rahul has asked for this yes all right uh, pushpinder you have okay i'll get visa for spain bachelor so i'll be flying directly or i have to wait so pushpinder you can fly when the borders are actually you know completely open about this uh, so that you are not in institutional quarantine now since as sanya was mentioning beforehand uh when we were talking about certain flights now because of this covid 19 thing there will be certain countries wherein if you travel or have a halt or you travel from their country or choose that sort of flights you might not have the institutional quarantine which means you will not be staying 14 days separately somewhere else you know outside your house however 14 days home quarantine will be there which means when you land up for any university i mean you are choosing your you know accommodation that uh, that time 14 days of home quarantine will be there and institutional quarantine when we were talking about certain flights that thing will not be there if you are traveling to certain countries that will be there but however you will have to wait for some more time to have more clarity in terms of traveling to spender for which country okay thank you everyone Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, which is coming soon. And take care of your families and of yourselves. And wish you all luck. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.